This is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be doing a test. We're going to see what's faster, an electric powered race car or a gasoline powered race car. So to do this, we're going to be using the hill climb version of the SBR4. And what we're going to do is we're going to make an electric version of this car to compete against the gasoline powered one. So we'll clone the one we have, and then we're going to modify it some. Well, first, we'll put it on the road flat because it doesn't need to be all crooked like that. And now we'll go ahead and change out some of these parts. So we go to the parts menu, we go to body. Most obvious thing we gotta change out is gonna be the engine. We need to put in the performance rear electric motor. And then we also need to go to the front suspension and we wanna put in a different differential. We want the performance front electric motor. That makes the vehicle all wheel drive, but it's not gonna drive right now because it still has a gas tank. So we need to go to the fuel tank and we need to swap it for a 40 kilowatt battery pack. Now we have an electric version of the SBR4 that should be very comparable, I would think, to the gasoline powered one over there. Just differentiate them a little bit though. We'll do one more small change. We'll mess around with the colors a little bit. So this one, let's make it have inverted colors. So it'll have yellow there and then white there. And the yellow is to show it's electric. And that should be a perfect vehicle to use. So we're gonna bring both these cars up to the starting line. Do it nice and slowly. There we go, that looks close enough to me. And we'll do this car as close as we can to the same. And there. A little too far. There you go. That's perfect. We'll save the spot for both vehicles. And we're going to let the AI drive them. I'm not even going to drive it. Just going to let the AI do its thing and watch what happens. So to make the AI drive it, we grab any car I can possibly choose. And even if it ends up like that, that's fine. And all we do is we teleport it to the end of the drag strip and they will drive as fast as possible towards this car. And just to make sure they're going as fast as possible through the quarter mile test, I'm going to put the car way over here because sometimes the AI seems to slow down if the car gets a little too close. I know they won't now. And Here's a fun idea for the camera angle. We got a front seat at the drag strip to watch the drag race. I don't know if this will actually work, but we're gonna try it out. So here we go, drag race is starting. The electric is off to a great start. Now they're a little too far away. So we freeze physics, go to the gas powered car and we can just watch it from here. That's a perfectly fine camera angle from here on out. And the electric has won the race, but it looks like the gas powered one was gaining on it pretty easily. All right, now it's slowing down though because it doesn't want to drive completely off the road at the end of the drag strip. Although it's not slowing down fast enough. Oh, and the electric almost pushed him off the road further. For that test, the electric car definitely won, but I want to make sure the AI had a good launch with the gas powered car because sometimes they don't know how to launch the car properly because all they do to launch a car is they hold down the accelerator all the way. And that works great for an electric car with its instant torque and it's pretty much a perfect launch as far as I'm concerned. But with a gas powered car, that's not exactly the case because the car is idling at about a thousand RPM. If you floor it, it takes a second for it to get up to about 3,000 RPM and then it really starts moving. And if you're really drag racing, that's not how you would launch the car. You would launch it from a high RPM. So we gotta make sure the AI actually does that. So to do that, I have a really simple solution. We're gonna go to this car, we're gonna put it to realistic gearbox, we're gonna rev it up all the way, and then we're gonna tell the AI to chase the vehicle. And this should give them as good of a launch as you can expect out of the AI. And we're gonna watch it and make sure it looks pretty decent. And that still wasn't that good. You notice there was just a little bit of a stutter right at the start, and I feel like if I was launching the car, I wouldn't have that stutter. And in fact, I might actually be faster than the electric car if I had a good launch. See, that's the difference. With the gas-powered car, you actually have to do a good launch. With the electric one, all you can do is floor it. You really don't have any other option. So what I want to do is I want to do a timed race where I do both of the cars to the best of my ability. I should go to the electric one and save this configuration. That way I don't have to rebuild it every time I want to use it. So we go into the vehicle customization. We go to save and load. And then we'll just call this the, um, how about ESBR Hill Climb. That's a great name. Makes sense at least. Probably will regret that name the second I hit save. And now I regret it. Don't know why, but I already do. Anyways, to do the comparison, we're going to go to time trials. And then we're going to race this exact same spot because it's really a great place to do drag races. In fact, it's the only real place I know of to do drag races. So I'll start with the gas powered car because that's the only one showing up at this time and then we'll move on to the electric one. So let's see if my talk is true that I can launch this car better than the AI. Although really all I'm gonna do is hold down the accelerator, but look how much smoother I came off the line. There was no stutter at all. It just went. That was like a really easy launch. And we're gonna get a time of 9.387 seconds. That is a very fast time. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out why my car is not showing up. And then when I get it showing up, I'll go ahead and be back for the next race. I went ahead and rebuilt the car and then I had a thought. On the 
fuel tank, and I say it like that because it's not actually a fuel tank, but under the fuel tank option, we had two battery packs available. We had the 40 kilowatt battery pack, and then we also had the 100 kilowatt solid state battery pack. Now, without really thinking, I just chose the 40 kilowatt one because I figured less kilowatt would mean a lighter battery, which would mean a better performing vehicle. But then I thought about it a little bit more. Well, if the other one's a solid state, does that make a difference? Does that mean that the weight difference between the two isn't actually that big of a difference because solid state batteries are better? Or maybe even the solid state batteries are able to output more power, which means you would have a faster vehicle if you use that. So I have a 100 kilowatt version of the vehicle and a 40 kilowatt version of the vehicle. And we're gonna drag race between these two and see if there's a noticeable difference. So freeze physics, accelerate, accelerate, unfreeze, and let's see if I notice a difference between the two in a drag race. That looks pretty much identical. I see no difference between the two vehicles, so I think the battery pack appears to mostly, so far at least, just affect the vehicle's range. But there's another test I wanna do. Because you could have two vehicles that perform pretty similarly, but they might weigh a little bit different. I wanna put both of these cars on the scale and make sure that they weigh the same amount. So we're gonna go ahead and spawn up the triple scale. I don't think I've ever used that before, to be honest with you. This might be the very first time I've ever used one in a video. Uh, if you know of a time I've used it in a video, do leave a comment because that would be like some super crazy, I know everything about YBR kind of knowledge right there, wouldn't it? So anyways, we put one on there and then, oh, squeeze it on. It made it, all right. Let me put the other one right in front of it. Come to a stop. We gotta let them sit just for a second for the scales to just kind of levelize out. And let's see, what's this one reading at? 3621, 3622. This one is at 3621. So they do weigh the same amount. So there's no reason not to have a 1000 kilowatt battery then. And thankfully, when I went ahead and remade the vehicle and made sure it shows up in the vehicle selector, and I even gave it a little thumbnail and I gave it a different name, I did a few changes. But most importantly, I gave it the 100 kilowatt battery. So it's as good as it can possibly be. And it doesn't seem to invalidate the previous test, but it doesn't really matter because we're gonna now do pretty much the same test again, but in the time trial mode and see if it beats the other time. And just like before with the electric version, I don't need to worry about revving up the engine. I can just floor it right before it says go and we'll be fine. It actually lurched just a little bit. That was funny. I don't think it makes any difference whatsoever on the time we're gonna get though. It feels pretty much just as fast as the other one off the line, but it might have slowed down a little bit more on the top end near the end, and it only got a time of 9.991, which is still a really good time, but not as fast as the other one. And I have another curiosity I want to do real quickly. Is this faster than the hill climb version with the sequential gearbox? Because I believe the sequential gearbox is slower than the dual clutch transmission. And I'm pretty sure we can launch this the exact same way we launched the DCT. We just rev it up, it holds the RPM, and we are gone. It still has very, very fast shifts, but I think the dual clutch is just really, really, really fast. So yeah, it actually slots right in between the electric and the dual clutch transmission. And just for fun, here are all three cars side by side. One interesting thing you'll notice is the electric car is slowest the entire way. If you pause this at any time during the whole race, the electric car will be at a lower speed. And the faster you go, the more noticeable it is. We can pretty safely conclude that the electric version is not as fast as the gas powered version in a straight line, but what if we add some curves into the mix? So we're gonna go to Tail of the Dragon and do some comparisons here. I chose this map because it has a nifty feature. Because it's basically just a single road, it's really easy to get the AI to race another AI. All you need to do is choose two cars you wanna race with. So one is gonna be the electric SBR, and then the other one is gonna be the dual clutch transmission version because I want this to be the fastest versus the fastest. And I think the dual clutch transmission should be faster than the electric based on the drag racing. So we tell the electric one to go racing first. Oh, let me get a little bit of a lead on the other car. So that looks like good enough of a distance. And then we'll go ahead and tell the other car to go in a random direction as well. And it's basically just gonna follow them because the way the AI works is they do not care if there's a car in front of them. If this car is faster than the electric one, it'll eventually just slam into the rear of it. And then you have proof, at least when the AI is driving it, that the gas powered one is faster in a curvy area like this. Although really on something like this, I start to wonder how consistent does the AI actually drive? If I tell them to do 10 laps of a track, 
will their times be almost the same every lap or is there going to be a big difference? Because if there's a big difference, well, this isn't that much better than if I was doing the racing myself. Yeah, I could totally do the racing myself, but I know I am not very consistent from lap to lap. And if I'm having to drive two separate cars, it's really hard to know if I'm driving them to their full potential. I'm going to do that, mind you. I will be doing a test where I'm actually the driver as well, just fun. But I'm hoping this is the more scientific test. And so far, the more scientific test appears to be telling me the electric car is going faster. I swear, it seems like the distance between us is slowly increasing every corner. It's not by much. It's like a half a foot every corner, but every corner it starts to add up. And right now I can't even see the electric car. Like I can just see them right at the edge of a corner every now and then. Now I actually don't see them at all, period. They have actually completely outran my vision. Wow, that's, that's not at all what I expected. That means the electric car is probably faster. If that's the case, we need to rerun this test. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell the AI to stop and we're gonna do the exact same test as before, but this time the gas powered car will be the leading car and the distance between them should be about the same. So I think it was right where the shadow of the tree ends is where I started the other vehicle. So that looks pretty good. Tell them to go in a random direction and it is working. Now, if everything goes according to plan, the electric car will eventually catch up to the gas powered car and crash into it. Deja vu, right? That's exactly what I said when I first started with the gas powered one. That's not what happened. Now, if the same thing happens here, then I would just conclude the AI is unfortunately not consistent enough to be able to be used in a comparison like this. I mean, you saw when the AI did the drag race, the electric car was faster. When I did the drag race and I feel like I used both of the cars to their peak potential, that made the gas powered car faster by a pretty good margin. It was only a half second, but in a quarter mile, a half second is a pretty big amount. The whole race itself was under 10 seconds, you know? So, so far, it does not appear to be gaining on the gas powered car like I expected it to. I'm gonna give it some extra time because it might be gaining very, very slowly. It does not feel like it's being lost by the gas powered car though, like was happening before. That's the biggest thing I'm noticing. It may not be catching them, but it's not losing them, which really doesn't make sense because the AI, the way it's coded, it literally does not know if there's a car in front of it. The car being in front of it should not in any way whatsoever affect how it's driving. I was really, really hoping this test would make it where I could give you guys a nice, simple conclusion with proof saying, if the AI is driving both of these cars, this car is faster. Unfortunately, we don't got that. This was the corner where I stopped the previous race. At that point in time, the electric car was out of my vision. Now, the gas powered one is pretty much the same distance it was from me from the very start of the race. So in the first test, the electric one was faster. In this test, they're about equal. All I can really say is the AI is not quite as consistent as I was hoping, at least here. Maybe if we go to an actual racetrack that has bigger, wider corners, it'll be a little bit more consistent. I chose Road Atlanta because it's another very easy map to get the AI to drive on. And I think with this racetrack, it should be even more of an advantage to the gas powered vehicle because on the long straights, that will give it a really good time to shine because the electric car just does not have the top end to keep up in those situations. So tell the electric car to get in front of me a bit. We'll stop it right about at the end of the rumble strip. That's pretty close to there. And we got to be on this car when we tell them to go in a random direction. It's kind of backwards feeling, but if I went back to there, I would just be telling the electric car to go random twice. But what you have to do is you have to tell the AI what to do when you're not on their car. It's because they assume that that's your car and you're driving that and you want the other cars to do something, not that both cars are going to be driving on their own. When you start doing things like that, that's when things get a little bit confusing. So anyways, the question is now, will the gas powered car catch up to the electric powered car? I'm going to give it a one lap of this track and it's not that long of a track. It should only take about two minutes at most to do a lap, I would think. Ideally, though, it'll catch up to the electric car before it does a lap. One thing we're probably going to notice, though, is when you actually watch how the AI drives, especially on a place like this where you're supposed to get up to high speeds on the straightaways, it's going to be really painful because the AI, for some reason, they like to slow down on straightaways for no real reason. Like, why are they slowing down right there only to accelerate again? And they're doing it again. I don't know. It's just really strange. 
I think it could just be the AI isn't perfectly designed for this map, but this is again one of the few maps I know of where it's just a single road, and if you tell the AI to do random both times, they'll go in the exact same path. That's what's most important. We can't do this at like Hirochi Raceway or the automation test track because there are too many alternative courses. If you tell them to both go random, they will both go random and they'll be completely different directions. All right, look, they are catching up though, very clearly to the electric powered vehicle. They're not crashing into them and they're not braking because that car's in front of them. Because you can see the car in front of them is also braking for no reason. It's just the way the AI is designed. Uh, but anyways, from this test, we can say, at least with some confidence, the AI is able to drive the gas powered vehicle faster than the electric powered vehicle on this track faster in this test. I say in this test because to be completely honest, I don't know if the AI is consistent enough to say that it's going to happen every time. If we ran the test again, the electric powered one could outrun the gas powered one. I really don't know. I think we just need to move on to a different kind of test. I think we need to move on to a test where I am the driver, which is probably going to be even less consistent. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a time trial, but I'm going to do some practice runs first. I'm going to do five laps with the electric powered one and then five laps with the gas powered one. And then I'm going to do a run with each car and whichever car is faster wins. Okay, I completed my five laps of practice in each car for a total of 10 laps. And with 10 laps, I feel like I have a decent idea of where I should be braking for all the corners. And I should be able to drive both vehicles decently fast through the track. And one thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to remember when I hit the checkpoint, what time did I hit? That was a 6.2. This one is going to be a 14.699. And I'm remembering these. So when I do the other one, I can kind of think, is this one going as fast as the electric one? Is it going faster? Is it going slower? Hopefully I'll remember these numbers and I'll be able to figure that out as I drive. But it's not exactly easy doing math in your head while you're driving. It's very, very distracting. It's kind of like texting while driving, except worse, because you're not just driving, you're racing. When you're racing, you actually need to really, really focus because on the streets, if you break a second late, you're going to be okay. You just got to break a little bit harder. On the racetrack, if you break a second late, well, you might just fly off the course and you might just crash. And that will really ruin the time trial if you crash on one of the runs. That's the thing. I got to make sure I don't drive so fast or I'm in danger of crashing. And that's all we're going to do, though. Just one lap. I know I have it set for two laps. I didn't really think about it when I clicked the settings. It's fine. We got a very solid time we can use for reference. So we got to beat a 58.232. So let's go ahead and swap the vehicle to the gas powered one. And again, we're going to be using the dual clutch transmission version. And we're doing this race without any additional practice. So I have the exact same knowledge of the course as I did for my last lap. Basically, I did that on purpose. I did all the practice at once and then all the racing at once. So that way I wouldn't get better at the course if I did practice after one of the races. And from the practice, I noticed something interesting. It felt like the gas powered version was a little bit more twitchy. I think it has a little bit more weight towards the rear of the vehicle. And then also it's a little bit lighter. So it slides around a little bit more easily. And that just makes it a little bit more twitchy to drive compared to the electric one. It's not a huge difference though. It is noticeable, but I'm not having to drive this completely different. I'm driving it basically the same as the electric one, I feel like with just a little bit more care when I get on the throttle. Because like right there, you see it kick out just a little bit more than the electric probably would in that situation. But I didn't kick it out so far where I lost time. It was just a tiny bit where I don't think it's gonna overall affect my time. And I'm going by the times from before. I think I'm going about a half second faster than I was with the electric one. So it looks like the gas powered one is going to win. Yeah, gas powered one won by only about a half second and you can do whatever you want with that information ideally if you wanted to really figure out which is fastest you would have a thousand drivers all driving to the best of their ability for a hundred laps and whichever car has the best time well that one you would say is the fastest unfortunately i don't have the resources to do something like that this is the best i can do anyways i want to do a little bit of testing over at the port real quickly and all i want to do here are some quick weight comparisons so the first thing we're going to do is grab the weight distribution app this tells you how much weight is on each wheel of the vehicle and then we're going to go ahead and spawn up both of the vehicles. Now for the electric one, we already know it weighs a little bit over 3,600 pounds. And then for the gas powered one, we could just read the menu, which says it weighs 3,252 pounds. So the electric one is almost 400 pounds heavier than the gas powered one. Now for the weight distribution, if we look at the gas powered one, 28% and 29% of the weight are being held on the rear wheels. On the electric one, it's 27 and 28. So the weight distribution is a little bit more forward on the electric one, like I thought from driving it. 
I was also thinking that maybe the... I was also thinking that maybe the center of gravity is a little bit lower as well, because that's usually an advantage of an electric car. On the gas-powered one, you can see the engine has a little bit of space between it and the lowest point on the car, but then if we go to the electric one, you'll see the batteries are sitting so low, it's basically as low as you can possibly go on the vehicle. And there is a way to measure the center of gravity in the game, but you need to have the debug options on. So I enabled those, and then if we go to the debug menu over here and we hit center of gravity, it'll show you a little tick right there where the center of gravity is. And then we just gotta try to line up the camera as equally as we can. So we're gonna get it as low as possible until it kind of intersects with the ground like that. And then make sure it's centered left and right as good as we can do. So that looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and try to do the exact same thing for the other one. So center of gravity is on. And then gotta make sure the camera is out the same distance. And unfortunately, the other vehicle is in the way a little bit. We can fix that real quickly. We'll just move it forward. That does not affect the camera at all. So we'll come to a stop. It's not coming to a stop, is it? There we go. We don't need the menu up anymore, actually. And then we'll try to get the camera aligned exactly the same. There we go. That looks pretty close. And if we go between the two vehicles, you can see the center of gravity moves forward a good amount. And then also, it does appear to be a little bit lower as well. So yeah, the center of gravity is lower on the electric version of the vehicle. Well, actually, there's a little number at the top left corner of the screen. Except for some reason, I cannot read that. Do I need glasses? Nah, there's something wrong with those numbers. Hold up. I think the two numbers are stacking between the two vehicles, and that's what's messing me up. Let's see. If we turn off the center of gravity on this one. Oh, there. Now I can read it. It's 5.90. Although I don't know how that number works. It says distance above ground. But driving forward and back increases that number. That's strange. Well, if I spawn up the vehicle in the same spot, it should give us a nice number. So right now it says 4.457 for the electric one. And then if we get the gas-powered one, it should be just a little bit bigger. Can't see it. Oh, actually, it turned off center of gravity. Turn that back on. And this one is 4.48. It's not a big difference. It's a couple of decimals down, but that is a bigger number. So there's another... Proof of the fact that the center of gravity is higher on the gas-powered one than the electric one. Although there is one huge advantage of the electric vehicle that we have completely overlooked thus far. Let's say, for example, you parked your electric vehicle in a rainstorm. You came back and it turns out the whole area was flooded and your vehicle is completely submerged in the water. That's fine. The good thing about the electric vehicle is it does not care. You can take that electric vehicle and drive it straight through the water and it'll pop up perfectly fine. Gas powered one, it would flood in just a couple of seconds. Electric one, yeah, it does great. Also, I think the electric one does a better job of kicking up sand. It kicks up so much sand as you drive through here, it's crazy. If I accidentally go in the water while I'm trying to kick up sand, that's fine. I don't have to worry about it because I got the electric one. It has a ton of sand. I don't, I don't think the gas powered one does it that good. Let's check, let's check them. Bring him over here. Make sure he doesn't get into the water because he'll drown. What a wimp. All right, I think that'll give me enough clearance. How much sand can you kick up? No, it's not as much, is it? Like, it's kicking up sand, but it's not the level that you were seeing with this guy. One more time, see how much this guy does. I know, I'm underwater, but it's fine. Like I said, he can manage. Oh, yeah, he, he kicks up sand way harder. I don't know why, but it just does. Ow! I just wanted to get him out of the water, man. You gotta be so violent, crazy electric car. All right, anyways, I think that's gonna do it for this video. As for the conclusion of which is better, I don't have one, but it was a fun comparison to make. So until next time, this is YBR, and remember, if you like or dislike this video, I will know. I can tell by measuring the center of gravity of a vehicle. So do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.